Hey guys, what's going on? Pride London here. You guys know what to do. As always, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Today we're going over a few different topics. Of course, the result against Leicester might have quite a lot of Chelsea fans very disappointed and sort of just avoiding the club at the moment. I'm trying not to think about where we are right now because it's obviously such such a depressing period for the club. So we'll go over some other news, but there is a part of you know this whole bad period that we're in that I am going to discuss um, further on into the video. But let's start off with some good news. And that is it. If we have a look here, report. Chelsea have made offer to sign player Guardiola labelled as God. And as you can see pictured here, we have David Alaba. And Kicker have stated that Bayern have received good offers from a variety of clubs for the 28-year-old that included Chelsea. And I believe I've seen reports sort of suggesting that Chelsea's offer is, you know, th there's very good offers um, that have been received, but Chelsea's is like maybe a notch above the rest. You know, they're offering something a little more. Um, whether that's accurate or, or not, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's the vibe I was getting from a few reports. But that is in itself good news. We know there's going to be a, a lot of clubs after him. He is an immense talent. Still, you know, he, he's getting towards the end section of his career. But look at Thiago Silva. He's going past his 30s quite well and is very strong when it comes to the centre-back position for us. So there's no reason why David Alaba wouldn't be a good acquisition for us, especially given that he is on a free. If we take a look at his transfer market page, you can see his contract runs out in summer 2021. I'm sure you guys know this, but you know that's six months from now, uh, or roughly five six months, and he will be available for free. I'm sure his contract will be quite an expensive one. He'd be expecting a fair bit of a wage in there. Um, but to anyone that doesn't know much about him, of course, he's 28 years old, not the tallest, 1.8 meters tall at centre back, uh, 76 appearances for Austria internationally with 14 goals from centre back, which is pretty solid. This season, uh, 15 appearances managed to get a goal, one yellow card in the Bundesliga. And then we can take a look at the Champions League. He's made five appearances. But generally, we just know David Alba is a solid acquisition. He can play a little bit of left back, can play either side at centre back and then further into central midfield if needed. But we know Chelsea are going to utilise him if we get him uh, solely as a centre back, I would assume. <laughs> I don't know for certain, but I'm pretty sure that's how it'd be. Um, and look at the value of uh, David Alba at the moment, of course, 28 is within your prime years, so bringing him in even if it was for a couple of seasons and he wanted to move on would be good because you're getting him on a free, yes, you're paying his wages, you might pay like the sign-on fee, the agent fees, all that sort of stuff, but you're not paying 60 million for one of the top centre-backs in the world. And as you can see here, he's won Champions Leagues, he's won Football of the Year seven times, he's won German Champions, a bunch of cups, of course. He is a FIFA World Cup winner, just like Olivier Giroud. We don't have many of them in our squad, and you know, adding another one certainly wouldn't be a bad thing. I don't think you can ever have too many World Cup winners in your squad. So, Chelsea making a very good offer for him. We don't know anything about how much we're offering compared to other people if we're... You know, if everyone's sort of offering the same sort of wage, let's say it's 250 grand, I don't know what it'd be. If everyone's offering the same, and it's just sort of going to be a situation of who does he prefer, where would he like to move to, what club does he think is a good, you know, club to join at the moment. It could come down to that, though it could come down to the financial aspect of it. And of course, Chelsea have an advantage over a lot of clubs in that scenario, in that we can say, okay, we'll offer you a big contract if you come to us and, you know, these clubs offering 250, we'll bump you up to 280 or something like that. Whether money is a massive motivator to him anymore, I, I would doubt it, but I'm sure it wouldn't be a bad thing and he wouldn't turn his nose up at it. So, very good news. Um, a four-year deal has already been agreed with a, between the Spanish Giants and the Austrian International. Alba's father stuck the fire further by implying that nothing had been confirmed about his son's destiny. I cannot confirm the reports from, from Spain. Nothing is fixed or signed yet. There are many, many interested parties. And Real Madrid, of course, are the ones that they're talking about. They're the Spanish Giants. Um, there's reports that, that that is the case, that they've got him, but that it's now coming out that there's a bunch of other clubs in as well, and it's not Real Madrid that have you know secured him. So we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you guys up to date, of course, but fingers crossed on this one. Then I told you I had a topic that wasn't you know as cheery as signing David Alaba is. Um, and we'll go through this tweet. The general consensus is that the club are actively seeking out potential replacements for Frank Lampard, but have yet to decide to pull the plug. He could get more games. Thomas Tuchel is most likely, due to availability, Nagelsmann the preference, 
and then a Rangnick Interim, Allegri is not an option. So we know Allegri is not really going to be, whether it's his choice, Allegri's choice, or the club's, um, we don't know. Um, if this was to happen, you know my position, I'm, I'm happy to wait this out and see how it goes over the next few games. Um, but Nagelsmann, out of those, would be my personal preference. Um, I think Nagelsmann's a good manager. Thomas Tuchel, or Tuchel, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, not generally an option that I would be very happy with. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it. I can't show it due to copyright reasons, but there was an interview that came out um, today as I'm uploading this with Demba Bar. And of course, that incident earlier on in the season, or was it maybe the end of last season, PSG and another club, I can't remember who they were, there was the racist incident where um, the, something was said from the PSG staff, I believe, I might have had that wrong, but some staff member said some racist things and there was a big fallout and the game was um, sort of like postponed and cancelled. Um, because the players decided not to walk out on the pitch again, which was, you know, a, a very good choice and I stand by what they've done there, but there are talks that players aren't happy with Thomas Tuchel, like Demba Bar in that interview said a lot of things that sort of implied that Tuchel was, you know, not very sympathetic towards that. He was blaming the players for, you know, the racist things that were said and such, or something along those lines. He, he didn't think that it was, you know, an outlandish thing to have said or to have done, um, which is crazy to me. And if that is the case with uh, Tuchel, if he is that sort of person, then he would absolutely not be a choice for me. He would not be welcome at the club, and I would be very disappointed in Chelsea for um, for hiring him because of you know the work that Chelsea have done over the years to you know the whole uh, say no to racism campaign. That's like a Premier League thing. Chelsea have worked on their own things um, for years now to try and implement more. Um, well, I guess ethnic groups into the club and have done a lot of good work and it'd be really disappointing if you know it comes out we see more details coming out about Tuchel and it find, we find out he's that kind of guy and then we go and hire a guy like that so for me maybe just steer clear of him Nagelsmann is one that I think maybe might not be an option in January and we could have to wait until the summer for him um, if that's the case then as I've said, I'm happy to give it till the end of the year if things really are looking dire and we look like we're going to drop way down, we're not even looking close to top four, then in that scenario, yes, I would think we'd need to get an interim manager in. Um, but for now, as I've said, give it time, in my opinion. But we'll see how it goes. Of course, we've got a game against Luton coming up in the Cup. Hopefully, like, every game is scary now, even the games that we should be winning um a very terrifying and that Luton game should be another win that should be another way to build a bit of confidence I know it, it sort of worked with Morecambe we got the win at Morecambe then at Fulham and then of course uh drop points at Leicester so maybe we can restart this again get the win at Luton and then start getting on some wins because we're heading into a month of very difficult fixtures and uh, next month so it will be an interesting one we need to get a bit of form going and if Frank Lampard turns it around and starts winning some of these difficult fixtures then maybe opinions will start to change on him. But for now, I think it's very on edge right now. There's, I think one or two more bad results, and I think the board will probably be getting rid of Frank Lampard. But that is going to be the end of this video. If you guys want to let me know what you think, please let me know down in the comment section down below. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Goodbye.